Thanks for tuning in to Bourbon Drop. I'm your host, Myron. Today, we've got the Penelope Tokai finish. Now, look, I know the front looks like it says Takaji, but it is not pronounced Takaji. It is pronounced Tokai. Let's get it. Bottom drop. Bottom drop. So this is also part of the Cooper finish series that Penelope does. This is a 95.5 rye. It comes in at eight years old and 106 proof. So, you know, Penelope, they, they've been doing different things lately. With this new finishing series, they are just putting their whiskeys into other uh, casks and seeing what they come up with. They have been putting out some hitters like this one right here. This is the s and pick. This is the Rose cast finish and then the Rio. Everybody knows about the Rio, so I'm not even gonna go into that. But this one right here, this is a little different. This is the rye that they're putting out. Normally it's their four grain bourbon, but this is their rye. Like I said, 95.5, eight years old, straight up MGP rye. We know that they are owned by Ross and Squibb now. Uh, the, the wine cast that they finished it in is known for its sweetness so it's a it's a hungarian sweet wine um i think it's dessert wine is what they call it hungarian dessert wine it is from the tokai region which is the northeast region of hungary um it grows a fungus on the grape believe it or not and that that fungus it's called botrytis cideria and it actually causes that grape to kind of like shrink and as it shrinks those uh those 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 sweet notes become more concentrated so they have different times at which they pick those grapes uh, for their sweetness. They make different levels of that type of wine, uh, be, depending on when they pick those grapes, depending on the mold. So it's a lot that goes into it, but it is a very sweet wine. So I can't wait to give you guys my review on this ride finished in Tokai Barrels. Let's get it to the nose. It actually smells like, um, a, like just a typical rye. I don't smell anything different, just like a normal rye, a little bit of oak on it. Let's get into the palette, see if we can pull anything else out. Oh, that's sweet. Oh, that's really sweet. That's good. Oh, I like that. I get a lot of dates. A lot of plums, kind of like the Hemingway. So that Hemingway rye with the dates and the plums, I'm kind of getting that on this rye. The rye still shines through. It's not overdone. I do like this. I think it's starting to get warm here in Maryland now. I think I'm going to have to put this thing out on the balcony with, um, I mean, out on the deck with uh, with the cigar and see, see how it stacks up. Let's get into the notes one more time before I really get into the notes. A little doughy on the nose now. A little bit of a sweet vanilla. A little bit of fruit starting to come through. Yeah, I normally don't pick up notes on the nose until I get into the second sip. Sometimes they hit me right away and then most of the time I have to get into that, that second sip and then go back to the nose to pull everything else out. All right, so let's get into the palette one more time and see what it has to offer. Not the, not the boldest palette in the world. Like I said, it's super sweet. It comes across the palette super sweet. It has a little bit of a citrus thing going on now. Still has those plums, still has that date note. You can definitely tell it's a rye. I do pick up a slight grassiness. Not bad though. You guys know me. I don't like that like hay, <laughs> hay grass note in my whiskeys at all, but I definitely can tell that this is a rye. Uh, finishes more along the lines of leather. I don't pick up a lot of char. I'm not picking up a lot of char in this thing at all. One more time.
yeah, just really sweet, really easy to drink. For it to be 106 proof, man. No kick. No kick. I just, it was fleeting, but I just had like a slight bit of that nuttiness, like that sunflower seed nuttiness that I talk about sometimes. It was fleeting, but it like came in and just went away. But there's no char on the palate at all, to me at least. It's more of that leather on the palate on the end, on the back end, um, and that's pretty much it. All right, so now that I went through the nosing notes and tasting notes, uh, let's, uh, let's get into the breakdown. So, is it worth the chase? Um, I am not gonna say it's worth the chase. I will say if you see it, it is definitely worth picking up and definitely worth checking out. I can't see myself saying, man, I gotta have this thing or run it from store to store. Now that I've had it, I'm like, okay, it's good. I really do like it, but I'm not gonna sit there and chase it. Um, is it worth retail? It's 90 bucks, right? So it retails at 90 bucks. That is asking a lot. However, it is eight year old rye. You're not getting a lot of aged rye like that and finished. So I do see where, uh, you know, the cost does come into play. Uh, when it comes into them pricing this bottle. 90 bucks is still quite a bit though. I think, oh man, I I would be happy with this bottle at about 60 bucks, honestly. 90 is, 90 is asking a lot. It, it really is. Um, I would say 60 to 65 bucks is probably where I would, where I would like to see this bottle, but at 90 bucks, hey, you know, it is what it is. Uh, you know, make make your own decision. Um, who's it for? At 106 proof, I would say that, and I would probably give it to a, a new bourbon drinker, but that beginner level, intermediate, you know, in between that level, beginner to intermediate on up. So intermediate, I don't think would have a problem with this bottle. An experienced bourbon drink, I don't think would have a problem with this bottle. A newbie, it might be a little too much for them, but I think, you know, if you gave it to a new bourbon drinker, I think, because it drank easy to me. Now, I can drink some high proof stuff, so that doesn't say a lot, but uh, I would at least pour them a little bit and then see where it goes, you know? But definitely like that kind of beginner to intermediate where they're starting to handle 100 proof products and they're like, okay, 100 proofs aren't bad, you know? They can, I think they'll be able to handle this at 106. Um, will it always be on a bar? I don't think it will always be on a bar. I, and the reason why I say that is because after this one is gone, I am not gonna be running out to go get it. Is it good? Yeah, I like it. It's very sweet. You have to be a rye lover because it does offer some of those, it, it's not bad. Some of those grass notes through, do shine through. It's very sweet, that Tokai finish on it. Um, so. Like I said, I don't think it's always gonna be on the bar. Um, if I do run out, it's not like I'm gonna be running to the store to get another one. And with that being said, let the whiskey flow. Never run out unless you head it to a drop. Till next time.